My name is Shiv Kumar and I live in New Delhi. Uh, I'm an economist, uh, but I've also been uh, practicing evaluation uh, for many years now, uh, doing assignments for UNDP, UNICEF uh, and other international agencies. And, uh, and the way it is, uh, when you look at evaluation today, I mean, there are three or four important lessons that we should take away from this practice of evaluation. Uh, the first is that uh, evaluation needs to be embedded in the practice of democracy. And I say that because uh, accountability is at the heart of evaluation. And in any democracy, uh, accountability is critical. But what happens if you take India, for example, we are going into national elections uh, this month. One political party is demanding accountability from the other political party. But uh, evaluation is not about accountability between or among political parties. It is accountability to people. And I think that important thing about how do you make governments evaluate the functioning of governments and report to the people is the essence of uh, when I say evaluation should be embedded in democracy, that's what I mean. The second one I think is, uh, again I find very important, is that the practice of evaluation has to be built on the foundations of ethics and equity. Now we do believe in equity and most constitutions will pledge for equal treatment and fair treatment to everybody uh, and so that perspective is important but in the profession of evaluation ethics is extremely important because we're really talking about honesty and courage and when we use the word independence it means as they say speaking truth to power so you really have to be very honest very ethical uh, and report uh, what you see. And I think that again is very essential at this point of time. The third thing which I, when I look at many developing countries, uh, you find that evaluation cannot blossom in a vacuum. And you need accountability frameworks at the national level. These could be legislative frameworks, policy frameworks, financial frameworks, before you find evaluation really succeeds. For instance, when you're even taking a simple thing about accountability and corruption uh, in governments, which evaluations can indeed bring out uh, misuse of resources and so on, uh, you need legislative frameworks that guarantee services to people, where there's a grievance redressal mechanism in place, there's maybe even a whistleblower's law, and uh, you need resources allocated for evaluation. You need to have new methods of evaluation. In India, for instance, we talk about social audits, uh, public hearings and meetings. So you really have to uh, have a framework within which evaluation thrives and uh, performs. The last one I wanted to say is, in fact, this morning we had an interesting uh, discussion that uh, uh, you know, in economics there's an old law called supply creates its own demand. And I think that is very true of evaluation, that if you do good evaluations, the demand for evaluations will increase. And the way you do good evaluations is to ensure that there is action that emerges after the evaluation. So you do an evaluation, you report it to the people and the communities that are affected by this intervention, you empower the communities, you, you enable them to ask questions, put public pressure on the politicians, on the governments, and you really stimulate that kind of debate and discussion in communities. So the core of which lies in the results of evaluation. So I think uh, these four, of four lessons that I've taught, uh, I've listed are, in my view, extremely important when we strengthen the practice of evaluation.